Yeah, so um, uh, traditionally people with asthma are thought of as a group that had uh, more eosinophilic or TH2 type inflammation. People are usually um, diagnosed earlier in life, though not always. Um, and then COPD is always thought on another side of the spectrum as, as a disease of prim primarily neutrophilic inflammation and fixed airflow obstruction. Um, and often a result of common exposures like cigarette smoke. But it is sort of increasingly recognized, um, not necessarily recently, but it's always been thought that there could be some spectrum where people could have elements of both diseases. And then with the advent of newer therapies, particularly targeted treatments for asthma and also um, treatments like inhaled corticosteroids and the necessity to target those treatments to people who benefit, um, I think an increasing um, amount of literature on the overlap of the two diseases, asthma and COPD, termed ACO or asthma COPD overlap. Um, and so I guess some of the newer literature has suggested that people with asthma and COPD overlap probably have, are younger, um, have a higher BMI or a little bit heavier, um, and probably have a little bit less uh, burden of smoking exposure through their life, so less pack years of smoking in some epidemiologic studies. Um, and there's been a fairly consistent demonstration that people with asthma COPD overlap have um, a higher risk for exacerbation events and hospitalizations. Um, there was one Spanish study that showed that people with ACO had a lower mortality risk compared to um, people who had COPD alone. Um, but I think the story about mortality is probably not as well established. I just think it's a very interesting question about if you want to think of asthma and COPD as very different diseases or diseases that are along a spectrum as Niru mentioned. And that kind of influences what you might imagine would happen if people had both diseases at the same time. And understanding whether people with both diseases have primarily attributes of one or the other or whether it's the worst of all worlds is an issue of considerable clinical importance given that we know that these are very common So we did this study in the NHLBI pooled cohort study, which we worked on for some years to harmonize and pool data across nine U.S. general population-based studies. And we think that this is a really excellent opportunity to understand common conditions such as asthma COPD overlap because we have such a large age spectrum to analyze. We have followed up these adults over many, many decades and therefore we're able to understand uh, of the variety of health outcomes that occur. So um, first, you know, we defined asthma COPD overlap um, with a definition of a self-reported doctor diagnosis of asthma. Um, and then COPD was defined spirometrically um, based upon airflow obstruction. Um, and so this definition is important because it also uh, highlights you know, how this, our results could be different from other studies. And, and so um, certainly should, the results should be interpreted in that way. But we, one of the first findings is that we found with the, that definition, the prevalence of asthma COPD overlap in the cohort was about 1.2%. Um, and if you compare that to other studies, I think that's ba the, the differences are related to the definition itself and also the comparison group, the cohort. Um, second, uh, you know, we looked at a couple of outcomes, uh, asthma hospitalizations and events, um, COPD hospitalization events, and mortality. Um, and so one of the other major findings was that the group with asthma COPD overlap had a substantially higher risk for COPD hospitalizations compared to people with COPD alone, um, and also people who uh, didn't have COPD or asthma. And then I think one of the most remarkable findings is the, the, the risk for mortality. So the group with asthma COPD overlap had a, the highest risk for mortality, um, and that was statistically significant, compared to people with asthma alone, COPD alone, or neither diagnosis. Um, which as it is definitely contrasted to the previous literature suggesting a lower risk for mortality um, compared to COPD alone.
So certainly uh, the scientific community is interested in the topic of asthma COPD overlap and there is a lot of focus and work um, to understand this group. Um, and so uh, the findings though of higher mortality I think just raise the bar and the, the necessity to do more work to better understand what constitutes and, and defines this risk. In terms of what we've learned about the prognosis of ACO and what still needs to be learned, I think we've found compelling evidence that there may be excess uh, adverse outcomes in people who carry both diagnoses as we have defined them. Um, this means it's a public health priority to figure out why these people are at higher risk and how that risk can be mitigated or prevented. And so what needs to be done is really along several spectra. In our work, we're going to be working on looking at different definitions of disease and additional outcomes and trying to leverage the biomarkers that we have. But clearly, additional work needs to be done from a trial standpoint and more mechanistic studies and uh, more trials in people with uh, more tightly phenotyped disease.